mistakes. And I believe that anything that God does, he does it well. He does it well. And when you start out, started out today, getting on a 150 flight that didn't land till almost six o'clock. And when you kind of start seeing things go a little out of the way, the mature believer doesn't get frustrated, but you begin to rest in the fact that God has a plan. And the Lord has a plan. And God began to say to me, I got a plan. I tweeted that. He said, I got a plan. And he said that the women that are in this building are people that God is getting ready to shift them to another dimension, my God. And all I have to say tonight, if you got the time, God got the power. I just want to know who I'm talking to. If you got the time, God's got the power. I brought my own threshing floor with me. about you tonight, but I'm looking for the glory cloud. I'm just looking for the women that I came to preach to. I'm looking for the glory cloud. There's a song that is going to be on my next project coming out in February. And every time I sing this song, invite his presence in a little longer how I long to be with you Jesus hallelujah I see my Jesus in this building what can I do for you? What can I bring to you? What kind of song would you like me to sing? I'll dance a dance for you. No matter the world. 
I wish I had some women in here that
Lord, you can be seated in his presence. You can treat it like a conference or you can treat it like a divine appointment. Oh, I didn't hear nobody say nothing. You can treat it like a conference or you can treat it like it's a divine appointment. And if you sit next to somebody tonight and they too quiet, you may need to move your seat. on the calendar of time before the foundation of the world was laid. Some of y'all are taking that like that is Christian jargon and I promise you by the time I get through tonight and I'm not going to be before you long because I will finish up because this is a part one and a part two message tonight and as I sat on the plane and I began to read the word of God and began to understand what God was trying to say to us tonight, my spirit man began to leap and it began to jump because the Lord while on that plane ride, I couldn't sleep last night. I couldn't sleep last night. When I thought about coming here, I couldn't sleep last night. Some of y'all don't know what that means, but when the Lord keeps a prophet woke all night, it is because of what is going to be deposited in that day that the Lord wanted me to sit watch over so that the enemy wouldn't steal what God was going to do in this day. 
And I'm here to tell you that the thief been caught. And whatever you're going through, God's got a plan. Somebody in this building better give God a praise. Because the thief had been caught. And the enemy that thought he was going to annihilate the purpose and the promise of God in your life. He had been arrested by the heavenly host. And everything that God has promised and everything that he has declared and everything that he has prophesied. It's already come to pass. I hear the Lord say it's already done. But he says it's already done. Say it again, it's already done. I was looking at the scripture, and I'm going to paraphrase tonight. And I was looking at the scripture, and I'm going to, and I don't normally take subjects when I minister, but I had to take a subject tonight. I had to take a subject tonight. I heard this out of my spirit, and I have to tell you this because we are in a divine moment. We are in a divine moment. I know that it's a women's conference and there are men in this building and there are men that are watching. But we didn't put this timing on the calendar. God put this timing on the calendar. And I'm going to tell you why I said that. Because in this building over the next 72 hours of what God is speaking. I heard the Lord on the plane. He kept resonating this out of my spirit. What kind of woman is this? What kind of woman is this? What kind? And the men are saying, how does that relate to me? And you'll know in a minute. As I began to write what God was giving me, he began to give me the nine stages of a woman that has a guaranteed breakthrough. Oh, can I, can I just deliver this first? The nine ingredients for a woman that has a guaranteed breakthrough. And I'm not talking about, and, 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 and listen, when I say this, I have gotten beyond in the spirit realm, in my walk with God, I've gotten beyond uh, the point of, do I feel like I'm going to get a breakthrough? Or do I sense that I'm going to get a breakthrough? Because what the Lord has done, the breakthrough is so, it's so profound that in this next hour, the Lord is not going to trust your breakthrough to your senses. Because you may not sense it. And watch this. And if you depend upon your senses to make you respond to what God is saying, your senses just might make you miss the divine moment of God. And so the Lord has said, this one right here has nothing to do with what you feel. This one right here has nothing to do with what you sense. This one is a profound breakthrough that is according to the ingredients that the Lord has delivered from heaven, which means I don't care if hell is breaking through all around you this is a guaranteed breakthrough oh somebody better talk to somebody and say it's a guaranteed breakthrough hmm, it's a guaranteed breakthrough it's a guaranteed breakthrough no question in my mind <laughs> I can even watch this I can even tell you when it's going to happen Oh, didn't nobody come to play no games with it? I can tell you when it's going to happen. And the reason why the Lord has released me to be able to tell you when it's going to happen 
because the Lord is defining and describing what kind of woman is this. When you start looking at the scripture, the first thing that happened in the first woman that he is speaking of, watch this. He said that there was a woman that when Jesus was invited to uh, the house and, and, and he came into the house and he sat down and there was a woman, watch this, there was a woman that came into the house and she felt unworthy. Oh my God, Jesus. You know, the reason why some of us cannot comprehend the fact that my breakthrough is a guaranteed breakthrough is because the church has taught us how to determine that breakthrough by the position of where we are in life. The, uh, come on, the church have taught us that, that, that watch this, that if you've been real, real good, you're going to get a breakthrough. And if, you, and if you do real good, you're going to get a breakthrough. And if you, and if you pray real hard, you're going to get a breakthrough. And if you fast real long, you're going to get a breakthrough. But see what the church forgot is, there's a breakthrough that's guaranteed to the broke down. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Oh, somebody better say something. That was a that was a that was a breakthrough that's guaranteed to the woman that says I feel like giving up to the woman that says I don't know how to pray to the woman that says so much hell done hit my life that I don't even know if God is hearing my prayer. Come on here, somebody. There is a guaranteed breakthrough for a woman like that because it is out of that woman uh, comes the oil uh, of the anointing. Who am I talking to? You can't produce the oil up until you done been through enough hell. You can't produce. Oh, y'all. I'm not talking about a church praise. I'm not talking about a church dance. I'm talking about a praise that come through out of your spirit when you say I ain't got nothing else left but my praise. What kind of woman is this? Wait a minute. What kind of woman? Huh. Huh. That's all, baby. I'm preaching to you. That's all, you know. You know, this is kind of breaking tradition. And and, and watch this. This is the woman that breaks tradition. This is the woman that comes to church with no sleeves on. I'm not hearing y'all. This is the woman that comes with tattoos. And I'm not. This is the woman that comes. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. And she don't know which way to turn. Oh, y'all come on here. Because in the presence of Jesus is a spot for that woman. Because nobody else can get him ready for what God has sent him to do. But a broken woman. Oh, my God, I was somebody in here. Who am I preaching to? Maybe I'm talking to somebody by internet. Uh, maybe I ain't talking to nobody in here because we're too busy trying to, uh, trying to pretend and impress. I said, can't nobody else get him ready but a broken woman. Uh, can't nobody else get him ready but a woman that knows she ain't worthy. But guess what? She's been offered an opportunity to have an audience with Jesus. Watch this because what she carries up uh, is an alabaster box. What she carries up uh, is an oil. Where did she get it from? It's expensive. Oh, wait, wait. Uh -uh, sit down. Sit down. I got to talk about the price. I got to talk about the price. Because we play too much. I ain't hear nobody talk back to me. Ain't nobody stutting your church praise. You play too much. Come on, here, somebody. Ain't nobody stutting the people that talking about. And when I get my breakthrough, I'm going to praise them. No, the Lord has given me permission. Because guess what? The hell that I'm going through is the money in the spirit that I'm collecting, which makes my oil expensive. In other words, my praise got enough power to get Jesus ready to do what he said he was getting ready to do. Who am I preaching to right now? Y'all, 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 sit down. Y'all taking me too fast. Oh, Lord. Touch your neighbor and say, the hell you going through right now is getting Jesus ready to work for you. Oh, I ain't getting nobody. Come on here, tell somebody the hell you're going through right now is getting him ready here. Come on, come on. That's how you can be guaranteed that he getting ready to do it for you because the hell that you're going through is getting him ready to touch you, getting him ready to heal you, getting him ready to deliver you, getting him ready to give you a guaranteed breakthrough. Somebody give him a 
must shout if you believe it. Security, just stay right there because can't nobody kill me. I'm already dead. Already dead. Already dead. Already dead. Y'all come on, somebody. Whoa, y'all gonna make me go too fast now. Come on, somebody. Already dead. <laughs> yes, God. Come on, y'all sit down. Let me let me let me just do this. What what kind of woman? What kind of woman? What kind of woman is this? Come on now. Come on now. What kind of woman is this? Because you can always tell, you know, preaching, preaching to somebody by internet. I felt that one. You can always tell what kind of woman is this because, because you got to understand something. How do I know? How do I know that I am in the first stages of a guaranteed breakthrough? Because the Bible said when the woman began to break the alabaster box, and she began to pour the oil, oh, y'all, come on, on Jesus. You know, the disciples start getting upset. And, and watch this. Now, 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 I want you to see this. They weren't upset because some, look at this now. Some woman then jumped up and dashed Jesus with oil. Now, watch it. That's, that's his disciples. Nobody said, Master, you hurt? Master, was there something in the oil that burned your eyes? Because, you know, she poured it on your head. Master, you okay? Nobody looked at her and said, why you throw that on Jesus? You know what? They looked at her and said, how in the world is she going to spill something that expensive? Because the Bible said the reason why they were trying to stop her from pouring the oil is because a thief was in them. Now, how do you know when the enemy is about to shut you up? Because the enemy, which is the thief in you, will start telling you, you ain't got to praise him that hard. You ain't got to shout that loud. You ain't got to give God that kind of praise. You ain't got to run. You ain't got to jump. I'm not hearing y'all. Because the Judas in you wants to make you miss your opportunity to break your alabaster box. I just said something. I, no, we keep acting like. We keep acting like. No, 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 sit down. Because I just said something that I need to. I need to. No, y'all sit down. I said something that I need to work on a little bit. I need to work on this a little bit. Because, see, the reason why we can't get to the nine steps of the ingredients of the birthing out, because women done changed. Oh, God. Jesus, have mercy. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Women have changed on God. You know, he said that, listen, the nine steps of the ingredients is the first step of the woman that, that has the ability to break something, to give something that costs her something. Oh, I just said something right there. To give something that, that, that cost her something. She's the woman that that's really not afraid to break her shell. Man of God, break her shell. I'm not talking about, and thank you, hallelujah. Come on, that's why we don't see no move of God, and that's why, and that's why some of you all came in here tonight, and, and, and watch this, and to you, this is just another conference, because you don't understand that what kind of woman is this? Look, well, well, this is the kind of woman that understands the timing of God. This is the kind of woman that understands that in a split second of a moment, that God can create an atmosphere. He can create a place that he would change your life forever in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, if you can hear. So watch this. Let me show you how divine this is. Sit down. Let me just show you how divine this is. Let me show you how prophetic, how prophetic where we are tonight. That this ain't no chance. This ain't no, this is not church as usual. Y'all are hearing me. I don't do conferences. I do assignments. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Because see, some of y'all looking at me, you think you know me. I'm not the one either by them that was on TV with T.D. Jakes and everybody. No, no, she died. No, no, she died. No, this is another one. And I don't do conferences. I do divine assignments. And I may not came here for everybody, but I came here for somebody. 
to open up your mouth and praise God because the Lord will give you an opportunity. You can pray for years and God. Wait, 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 sit down. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Here it is. Here it is. How do I know that this is a divine moment? Huh. That tonight is a divine moment. Oh, Jesus. Because the Lord set this women's weekend. He set it up days before Rosh Hashanah. Now, 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 wait, I'm getting ready to say something now. Because, because Rosh Hashanah was the rebirthing. It's when everything is made new. Oh, y'all. It's when God prepares you to get ready to experience the most holy days that you have ever experienced in your life. It is the day that the Lord gives you an opportunity to start your life all over again. Y'all, I, my God. Why would the Lord choose this weekend? Because he's saying to somebody that's listening tonight, this time I'm not going to let you miss it. You done missed it too many times, but this time you're going to be changed forever, never to change back again. Who am I preaching to? I don't hear nobody praising God like you believe that. I don't hear nobody praising God like you believe that. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody say, somebody say women of Rosh Hashanah. No, no, y'all, 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 somebody better say that. Somebody say women of Rosh Hashanah. Because what I'm getting ready to show you is that leading into the Sunday, leading into the day where we would step over in a new dimension, the Bible classified that there were seven women that were of the women of Rosh Hashanah, which means these were women that were chosen to walk in freedom. These were women that was handpicked before the foundation of the world that deliverance and power would be in your hand. Who am I talking to right now? Wait a minute, sit down, because I say that. Now, y'all got, y'all got to forgive me, because I've been drinking some other kind of juice, so y'all got to forgive me, because I know I'm, 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 I'm way out there preaching, because, you know, I've been drinking some other kind of juice, because when I read this and I realized that, watch this, that living on the inside of me is the seven spirits of the women of Rosh Hashanah, which means in me is the power to rebirth myself. No, y'all. In me is the power to be reborn. In me is the power to be re-delivered. In me is the power to resurrect every gift and take back from the devil everything that was stolen. No, watch this. So watch this. Number one. After the woman that breaks her alabaster box. But I'm finna give you the seven women of Rosh Hashanah. I ain't preaching to everybody. I just want to see who I'm preaching to. I just want to see who I'm preaching to. Y'all, come on here, somebody. Because see, when I say that, when I say that I want to see who I'm preaching to, the minute you touch and agree, because what you don't understand is that in this next dispensation, the Lord don't need your faith. Uh, because this is a Lazarus situation. He didn't need Lazarus' faith to cause him to come back to life. He just needed Lazarus to respond when he heard him call his name. And if you're in this building tonight, the Holy Ghost is saying, I just need you to respond. Because anyway, what I am prophesying, your mind cannot contain it. You you cannot digest this, but if you respond to it, it will begin to develop in your spirit.
right. Somebody give God a shout right now. I'm just, wait a minute. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down for one second. Tell somebody for one second. Wait a minute. Wait. Tell somebody for one second. Now I'm just tell somebody for one second. I got to I got to holler out and praise God for a minute. But I'm developing some. Don't don't pay me no mind. Don't pay me no mind. If you see me shaking like somebody crazy, I gotta take a moment into because I hear the Lord saying, "There's a moment in the spirit right now." That if every woman in here, if you get up and go to praising God, and I'm talking about giving him a real praise, a praise out of your belly. He said, I'm about to develop something. When you get to praising God, there's going to be something that's going to be back in you that wasn't back in you before you were in this building. I give a heart say, you better give him a shout. You better open up your mouth. For a second, let me show you where we at right now. Hmm. Let me show you where we at right now. Y'all, y'all, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Security, come on, move, 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 move. I don't want security to follow me because it's restricting something that God want me to do. Hold on, that's Shunday. Who be a Shunday, Baba Bobo Shete? See that, that's Pakashi and that, Mahaya. A mind transfer. I want everybody to put your camera phones down now. Put your camera phones down because ain't no star. Because you're missing what God wants you to get. I'm not here nobody. You're trying to take a picture of it. And God wants you to breath it in your spirit. Somebody in this, somebody in this building, you better give God a praise. You better buy the tape. But you better not miss an opportunity to open up your mouth. Because it's a divine moment in the presence. 
Elijah, but the Almighty God is a divine timing. Somebody open up your mouth right now. Let me tell you what. Sit down. I'm going I'm to give you scripture. I'm going to give you scripture on it. I'm going to give you scripture on it. Come on. Seven. Seven women. Seven spirits of a woman. A Rosh Hashanah. Watch this. Sit down now. Sit down. I got to do this. Because this is. Jesus. See, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why some of y'all still trying to sit there. Some of y'all still trying to sit there and go. Why you ain't got the revelation yet. Because the Bible says that Sarah, first spirit of the woman of Rosh Hashanah. Sarah, watch this. Sarah, first spirit of a woman of Rosh Hashanah. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this, y'all. This thing is powerful. I want you to hear this. Now this right here is going to help you understand it. First of all, the woman of Rosh Hashanah, the first woman, the first lady of Rosh Hashanah must be a woman. My God, Jesus. Must be a woman. Must be a woman that have asked the Lord for something that now she thinks it is impossible for God to do it. Oh my God, y'all gonna make me hurt myself in here. Y'all gonna make me jump benches tonight. Come on, the first lady of Rosh Hashanah must be a woman who, watch this, the Bible said that she was past the age of bearing children. In other words, the loan officers have already told you that you can't get the house. Who am I preaching to? I'm not hearing y'all. I'm. See, the first lady of Rosh Hashanah must be a woman that have experienced lack and have experienced what I called the spirit she has battled, the spirit of impossibility. I'm not hearing y'all. The first First lady of Rosh Hashanah must be a woman that when she looks at her circumstance, it looks like there is no hope. When she looks at her circumstance, she can't find nobody to give her a word. But the first lady of Rosh Hashanah becomes the woman that gets a divine encounter with the I'm not hearing nobody. You better tell God tonight. Uh, you better understand this. Uh, that if you're in this building, uh, you are about to have a divine encounter. I'm here to tell you that God told me to tell you that the devil is alive. What the enemy thought uh, was not going to happen. Uh, it is happening uh, right now. My God, I wish somebody would start shouting. Nadia, no, y'all sit down, because now I'm going to have to preach to Nadia. Y'all sit down, because Nadia from my church, and Melinda from my church. So now I'm going to have to preach to the people in my church, because yeah, 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 yeah. Cause we the only ones that turn cartwheels. My, God. my people run and throw themselves up against the wall, because my people is drug addicts and crackheads, and, and they, they don't know nothing about praising God with a church praise. Yo, my people are running out the church. They're running all the way outside. Now I ain't hear nobody talk to me. Because what I'm looking for in this building now is the first lady of Rosh Hashanah. I'm looking for the woman that wants a divine encounter. I'm looking for a woman that wants a divine encounter from an angelic being. I'm looking for the woman that wants to have visitations by divine presence. I'm looking for the woman that wants the glory cloud to come down in her bedroom when she's praying. I'm looking for the woman whose car is filled with smoke because she's worshiping God and she's not in church, but she's in the divine presence where miracles are, are taking place in her spirit. I'm looking for that woman. So I got to tell you this. So the first lady of Rosh Hashanah. Hold up, we'll share you this. He going to do it. He going to do it. <laughs> okay, let me tell you like this, woman of God. I got the faith. 
He just wants you to praise him tonight. I got your faith. He gonna do it. First, first lady, watch the shadow. Watch this. Watch this. First lady, watch the shadow. Now, now. Come on, y'all sit down, because this, this, this right here is kind of deep. Because, 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 hey, I don't shut up, but we have seen him. Yeah, because they're with Shanna McKinney and Ness. Kiana and my hand in this. Kiana and my can hand in this. Shanna me, I see. Yamoya, Niana, Moya, Nia, see, and yes, she ye. Yamoya, Kia, Swasta. Yamoya, she, me, 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 I saw ya. Obias, I ya go standing. Order, yes. I just picked up a divine presence. Order. A divine. The presence and the spirit of what I'm about to say just landed in this building. The spirit, Bishop, of what I'm about to say just landed in this building. So what I'm getting ready to say is not just word, but the spirit has proceeded. The spirit has proceeded and made room for that word. He said that the first lady of Rosh Hashanah was a woman that it was an impossibility and then she had a divine encounter and then that which was possible became possible so then there are women in this building that are on that are on the left and the right of the first lady Sarah of Rosh Hashanah because there are the women that are saying this is an impossible thing for God to do but the Lord shall do it he said and then there are the women that are on the side of that the Lord did something for me and then when Abraham walked Isaac up to the mountain to put him on the altar, the Bible said in his mind when he was walking him up there, one translation said he already said he was dead in his mind. You got, wait a minute. And so the other side of the first lady of Rosh Hashanah is something that's been walked up. Watch this. Watch this. And the Bible said that when Abraham walked Isaac up and offered him up as a sacrifice, the Bible said that when he raised up the knife to take his life, that that was a ram in the bush and the ram was there. And so the spirit of Rosh Hashanah says that on the day of Rosh Hashanah, they blow the shofar 100 times because it is the ram's horn because that was a thing that delivered now what is this woman and who is this woman the bible said that it had been noted that when when watch this when abraham came back down from the mountain and Isaac told his mama what happened to him up there and that his life was almost taken come on the history says that Sarah shouted out six times and her shout was saying it almost happened in other words the devil almost took it y'all ain't saying that I'm not hearing them in other words what the Holy Ghost is saying that every woman in this place that when you begin to shout you let the devil know you almost took my victory you almost took my children but the Lord had a ram in the bush somebody with a shout he said the first lady uses her voice like a who was on my side where would I be somebody shot one wait a minute you didn't get that you didn't get that in this building in this building as a woman the first lady of Rosh Hashanah you got to shout six times because, oh, y'all ain't got to do it. You got to shout six times because six times says, six times says that what the devil meant for evil, God is working it out for my good. Six times says that it almost happened. I almost lost the victory. I almost lost my life. I almost lost power. I almost lost my breakthrough. 
but thanks be to God, he had a ram in the bush. And tonight, your ram is your voice. Open up your mouth. This ain't no joke. This ain't no joke. Hold the music. This ain't no joke. I'm not, I, no, this ain't no joke. I'm going to throw my fingers up six times. You, y'all think I'm playing. But the Holy Ghost said, by this time tomorrow, you're going to see some stuff turn around. No, I'm not playing. I don't play prophecy. If you're watching by internet, the Holy Ghost said, by this time tomorrow, you're going to see some stuff turn around because the Holy Ghost said that tonight your voice is a shofar and you got to blow and let the heavens know. God, I believe it. You got to blow to let hell know that I'm standing on the promises of Christ Jesus. Having done all the stand, I'm going to still stand. Somebody shout right now. Come on. Here we go. I'm telling you. Watch this. I did a study, and the study said, some of y'all saying, what is wrong with Providence Bynum? What is wrong with her? What is wrong with her? Why is she preaching so hard? Because I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found up. Was bound, but now I'm set free. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody shout. Somebody give him glory. You shall take 
six times she said she screamed out six times and her six times said I almost lost my prized possession but God turn around and tell three people but God y'all ain't seen it like y'all me tell you now I gotta tell you now I gotta give you a date sit down because I have a prophetic date for real I have a date I have a reason why the Lord's got me preaching the seven spirits of the women of Rosh Hashanah Rosh Hashanah the rebirthing the giving back the reviving when I've shouted, I've shouted six times. And what is Prophetess Bynum has been used to do in this place? I have to move swiftly on tomorrow night to give you the six other spirits. Why? Why? Why do I have to move on tomorrow night to give you the other six spirits? Because the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the women, the seven spirits of the women of Rosh Hashanah. Those spirits are spirits that have developed. Watch this. It happened. Everything that I'm getting ready to talk about right now, everything that I'm getting ready to finish ministering on, these seven women, their miracles and their breakthroughs took place on Rosh Hashanah. Wait a minute. Sarah, the one tonight, developed the blast that will go out a hundred times. Y'all ain't saying nothing. This, this spirit tonight that you are encountering is the developing of the howl of the supernatural breakthrough. Y'all ain't hear me. And so the Lord said to me, when you get through giving the other six, you have to give the other six uh, on tomorrow night because this thing, this new thing in the world, this new thing, people that are watching by television, people that are watching by internet, people that will be watching this tape, this thing that God is speaking of will take place on Sunday, the 16th, this coming Sunday, this coming Sunday, every divine spirit of the women of Rosh Hashanah will go into full effect on the day of Rosh Hashanah. You ain't hearing what I'm saying. You got to take this spirit into that day. You can't miss. Oh, y'all, come on here. You, uh, I just said something. So, so, if that's the day that all things are rebirthed, then I must carry the spirit of the blast of it almost happened, but it didn't. I must possess that spirit by Sunday. Because I will carry my whole family into that day. And I will be saying to the enemy on that day that everything that you almost thought you was going to do to my family, you can't do it. Everything you almost thought you was going to do to my mind, you can't do it. 
Everything you almost thought you was going to do in my body, you can't do it. Everything you almost thought you was going to do in my children, you can't do it. Everything you almost thought you was going to do in my ministry, you can't do it. Everything you almost thought you were going to cancel in the anointing and the assignment that is on my life, you can't do it because I'm blowing the sofa. Somebody give God a praise. Because what determines your power is what you able to carry into Rosh Hashanah, not your title. God, I feel like praising God right there. Right now, the people in the pews ought to praise God because that's the day that you get the same power. Uh-huh. That's the day that you become an evangelist too. That's the day you become a prophetess too. That's the day you become a bishop too. That's the day that you become an apostle too. I'm not giving nobody. That's the day that you get a chance to walk in the authorities of the heavens. That's the day that you get ready to come out here. You get ready to walk into the anointing. That's the day that when you open up your mouth and you praise God, demons gotta be. You scatter the gates of hell. You shut down the works of the devil. You ignite the glory of God. Somebody give God a praise. hands up in this place lift your hands up around the world around the world lift your hands up the women of Rosh Hashanah what kind of woman is this I am tonight the woman that possesses, watch this, the pre-testimony of your children, of your family. Watch this, already in the spirit realm, the Lord is going before you and already in the spirit realm, because of this word tonight, you already possess the testimonies where you would be told, Mama, I almost got hit by a car and it didn't happen. Mama, I had just left out the store when they robbed the store and everybody got killed and it didn't happen. Mama, I almost had an accident in my car and it didn't happen. Y'all better come over here. Y'all better come over here. Y'all better come over. Somebody better come over here. Come on. You possessing the testimony right now of it almost happened. But there was a ram in the bush. And that ram is my voice. That ram is my ability to shout. That ram is my ability to sound the alarm. But 
like this one right here. I tell you again, Sunday, it's not by chance that the Lord fixed it to be so. That he put this meeting on the weekend leading into Rosh Hashanah. It's not by chance that in the history of the scriptures there are seven women of Rosh Hashanah. Seven things that a woman must do before you enter into the new phase. By sunset Sunday, all things that you have made new will be made manifest new. See, you got to get your new now. Somebody better get caught up, praise. You got to get your new now. You got to get what's going to be new. So when you step over into Sunday evening, you going to step over into what's already been made new. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Somebody in here better get caught up, praise, because I feel you got to get your brand new. Get your mindset now. Somebody says six more to go. Tell somebody says six more to go. Tell somebody says six more to go. Tell somebody says six more to go. It's already over. It's already over. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. Adam, put it in your hands. In other words, you determine how it's going to turn out. It's in your hands. Somebody in this building, I want some women to worship him because I feel it. I feel, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel your newness. I feel your newness. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I see it. I see it. It ain't hopeless. It ain't hopeless. Haya! You are a woman of impossibilities. Somebody in this building, I sense it. I sense it on y'all. If y'all will just worship God, God will use me. If y'all just worship God, he'll use me. My God, he's sending me back here. My God from Zion. Somebody give him a praise. He's sending me back here. My God, he's going to do it for you. It ain't going to be no more vacillating. God going to use you, prophetess. He going to use you. He going to stabilize you. Somebody in this building, give him a praise. Give him a praise. Somebody worship him. I feel him in the building. Somebody worship him. I feel him in the building. I feel him in the building. I feel him in the building. Somebody worship him. 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 Come on, woman of God. Come on, woman of God. Come on, woman of God. Come on, woman of God.
this word is divine. This word is divine. I was flying on a plane. Felt like I was in a ram on the plane. Spirit of Sarah. Past the age. Possibilities. And then that which is made possible, it was almost taken away. Watch this. It was almost, watch this, y'all. It was almost taken away, but I had a mouth. And my mouth was my shofar. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Tell somebody it was almost taken away, but I had a mouth. Come on here, woman. It was almost taken away, but I had a mouth. So that means that the devil can make you keep your mouth shut. will come down in your circumstance. You better shout right now. You better shout. My God, I'm going to go to feel it. Shout. 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 this weekend I said the devil never wanted you that's why some of y'all thought you was going to lose your mind this year but tell the devil it's too late because I'm headed to the 16th it's too late because Sunday is coming you better give him a shout Sunday is coming and I'm going to step over into the rebirthing This is the weekend that I purify. This is the weekend that we ask for forgiveness. I'm going to tell you why. This is the weekend that we ask for forgiveness because what is being done, a shofar is blown in the atmosphere. But watch this. Before they can blow the shofar, it has to be scraped and cleaned out so that it can bring out the kind of sound that would pierce the heavens. And so this is the weekend that he brought, that he handpicked the women. I don't care what you say, you've been handpicked. A flyer didn't bring you here. A commercial didn't bring you here. The Spirit of the Lord handpicked you so that he can, he can scrape you out on the inside. Because when Sunday come and it's time for you to shout, your shofar is going to be purified. And it's going to sound the alarm. Y'all better come out here. Somebody, somebody better come out here. Somebody better come. You gonna shout and it's gonna pierce the darkness. It's gonna pierce through the heaviness. It's gonna make an announcement. Somebody in here give God a shout. I'm telling you.
charging by internet. On tomorrow night, every woman that's watching, God is going to finish the six. And by the end of the night, you shall possess the seven spirits of the women of Rosh Hashanah. I'll see you on tomorrow night. Good night. In this building. In this building. I want you to hear this. Don't nobody move. Because I'm in a different place. accept invitations. I don't have time. I can't waste oil. It costs me too much. This one cost me my life. to Puerto Rico and I got there to preach I stood up in the building the first night before I got ready to walk out God was speaking to me and when I got done preaching I was supposed to be there for two days and I walked out of that building since told the host I can't come back because my Holy Ghost is filling something. This ain't pure blood. And I went back to my hotel room and I went home. I raised the offering and said you can have every dollar. first dispensation and I use that word correctly of my ministry I was the people's prophet now I'm God's prophet say what my Jesus tell me to say I do what my Jesus tell me to do go places and I get ready to leave man of God to go to the hotel and the Holy Ghost drops me on the floor in the room and he said don't leave this building and I have to stay there and lay on the floor until the meeting is over and sometime I have to stand guard in the spirit for what God is getting ready to do what God is saying and what God is doing in this hour and what he's about to do no eye have seen no ear have heard see his glory. He is hovering in this building. It cost me everything. And I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. In this building tonight.
precious abilities are being made possible. The impossibilities are being made possible. The spirit of possibility have landed in this place. It's going to feel like like you just hit a main line. And after Sunday, Stuff that you've been praying for. Starting Monday, even people's spirit, enemies against you is going to change. Monday. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me because I know what I'm prophesying. Monday. I don't hear y'all talk back to me. The 17th and the 18th of the windows of Rosh Hashanah. In the third day, I will raise you up. Beginning Monday, everything is going to begin to change. All rebellions are going to break. The thing that would not break in your spirit to God. He is going to break it. Monday. 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 You will begin to see a manifestation of the newness of your being. You shall be made new from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Monday. Monday, Monday, the heavens will open. Monday, you will stand under an open heaven. Monday, there will be no need for intercession. But the Lord shall make intercession for you. He is praying. the spirit of creation livers and kidneys Hobasha will be healed on Monday heart murmurs and conditions Hobababakasada Monday will be a day that the portals will open and all things will be made whole
open doors that's been shut. The favor of the Lord. I just want somebody to worship him. I just want somebody to... I just wish somebody would just stop worshiping him. I'm telling you, the favor of the Lord. Divine favor. Divine favor, woman of God. Divine favor. This thing that I speak of is divine. This thing that I speak of is divine. This thing that I speak of is divine. This thing that it, it will not need man's help. This is divine. This is divine. This is divine. This thing that I speak of is divine. It's divine. It's divine. Get your mind off who? And just praise God because it's divine. Because the Lord said he's handpicking divine connections. There are going to be people that's going to do things for you that you don't even know. Because ain't nobody that you know is going to get the glory. speak what he tell me to speak I want to when the Lord began to let me just share this with you I was praying and I was walking through my transition and I was praying for restoration and the Lord said I don't want to restore you. I want to make you new. I don't want you to get up with any fashion of who you used to be. He said when Jesus died on the cross, died in one form, but he was resurrected in another. And he said in this next era of your life, when you stand and preach, you will stand and preach in the finished work and the resurrection power of God. Which means as you minister, resurrection is happening. Easter is taking place. Somebody ain't got to clap. Resurrection. That which is dead. Shall take on a new form. And it shall come back in a glorified body. God, I'm going to show you. A body that glorifies God. And when the Lord did that for me. to say to him, I'm yours. It's my armor. It's my armor. Lord, I'm yours. All I am is yours. Because it's my This building, this is what he said to me. Where you are walking, I want to use you as my mouthpiece. I want you to open your mouth and I want to fill it. I want you to remove yourself and I want to be able to speak to my people. And I want them to be able to hear what I'm saying. And then he said to me, coming into this weekend in Rosh Hashanah, I want to birth out a new woman. He said, the reason why I got you coming at this time, because I want to birth out a whole new batch. Y'all don't understand this. After Sunday, 
It's a batch of women in here that's getting ready to hit the spirit realm. I just wish I had somebody to understand what I just said. It's a batch of women in here that's getting ready to hit the spirit realm with all seven spirits of Rosh Hashanah. And when these women pray, everything that they touch gonna be made whole. People gonna be set free and delivered because they're gonna be praying from the realm of the seven spirits of Rosh Hashanah of a woman, which means they're going to be breakthrough prayers. And they're not gonna have to sweat and travail. They're gonna speak the word. And while they pray it, before they get finished, the phone go ring. said when I send you, I'm sending you and the places that I would give you to go. I want you to remove your shoes because I want your feet to touch the floor so that you can fill the ground and gather the infirmities of the people and declare that this is the ground of their victory and their deliverance. And as I begin to move in God, the Lord gave me this. I went to Bishop Hines Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I preached. And God had me to stay in the church. And when I got through moving in God and ministering, I got ready to leave, and God had used me mightily. And Bishop Hines came in to give me an honorarium, and I said, I don't want any more. He said, Dr. Bonnie, he said, it's like $74,000. I said, I don't want any more. He said, that's my Jesus told me to touch it. I said, the Lord told me don't touch it because I needed to plant a seed into your ministry so miracles can happen for your people. He called me back a week later and said, you won't believe the miracles that's happening in my church. Because I watched the Lord take care of me. I watched it with my own eyes. He was there. He fed me when I was hungry. took me to a place of complete satisfaction in him that whatever state I was in, I trusted. And I just keep saying, he got a plan. When I see it, I praise him. When I don't, I say, he got a plan. He working on something. He got a plan. When God gave me this, I was laying out in the presence of the Lord, and I was on a 21-day fast, and I was laying in the church until both sides of my hip was black and blue because we have a warehouse, so it wasn't no plush carpet like this. And God told me to lay in that church, and literally I was bruised on both sides of my hip. I would turn on one side and just ache and ache. And he said, I want you to... I want you to lay in here because there's some things that I'm using you to do. And when God got through with me, my body.
Bible fell open, and this is the honest to God's truth. And it fell open to the book of First Chronicles where it says, and after Solomon had finished giving God the 1,000 burnt offerings, the Lord spoke out of heaven to him and said, now tell me what you want me to do for you. And he said to me, Juanita, this is the only seed in the Bible where I give the person permission after they release it to tell me what they want me to do. And the Lord spoke that to me. I've given it over 200 times. And he began to prophesy. And I want you to hear me. Let me tell you what all of this means. He began to prophesy to me. And in the prophecy, he said, Talitha Kumi. He said, she that is under the prayer shawl, that's what Talitha Kumi means, she that is under the prayer shawl, come back to life. When Jesus got to the woman, to the little girl that had died, when he walked into the room, she was laying under a prayer shawl dead. The scripture says she was 12 years old. This is a revelation he gave me in prayer. He said, but when I walked in the room, I said, Talitha Kumi, she that is under the prayer shawl come back to life. And that night I had a dream. I had a dream that a prayer shawl fell down from heaven on top of my head and when my head burst through it, when I whirled around and preached, it turned into this dress. And he said, you will stand and preach and you will represent the body of Christ and she that is under the prayer shawl shall come back. 